Hey, Tobes. Hey, Toby, you just have a good meal? Oh no, you're waiting on your good meal. It's almost dinner time. Had to wait for the quads to roll in because the sky was really bright tonight. Pumpkin, you coming? You gonna come in, Pumpkin? What are you doing, you sniffing dog toys? Okay, as you were. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Time for a garden tour. Actually getting it done in the appropriate month this time, so already off to a win here. I figured would start in the house with the terrariums and I have a nice orchid getting ready to bloom, which I'm really excited about. It got some sun scorch on it. So I tend to push my cat Leia orchids a little bit far, but when you give them the light, they're more likely to flower, but then you also end up with stuff like that on the leaves. You know, morning sun can be tricky sometimes, right? I thought it was getting dappled light, turns out. Not so much. It's going to be okay though. I had hoped it would be in bloom for the tour, but not quite. This was outside. I moved it in because the flowers on this, they have lots of sappy substance on the ends of their buds and that was attracting ants and the ants go up and sometimes that can end up just destroying your flower buds. So it's in here now, just to be safe. Trariums are looking pretty good. This uh, parlor pump that's in here could use a fertilizing though. Its foliage is really really yellow. I think it would appreciate some nitrogen and something with some more sustenance in it. The rest of them, there isn't really much that's changed with them. They're just hanging out and chilling. The begonia inside of this one in the middle hasn't been doing much. I did drop a cryptanthus in there. I don't know where it came from, but it's in there. I don't remember where I found it, but that's where it is now. And there's a bunch of new moss. In the bottom of this one, this is actually java moss from my fish tank. I was cleaning one of my aquariums and the moss was growing all up along the side of the overflow. It's a big black box that carries water down below the tank to the filter and that moss fills in and uh, it can clog things up. Don't want that to happen, so the tank will overflow on the floor. So I thought this is a nice moist environment. I'll just drop it in there and see what happens. It's been about three weeks and still in there, still doing its thing, still looking all right. I think it'd be a good idea to get outside before it starts to rain the whole day. I've been out there doing some cleaning and tidying, still picking up from the storms last weekend. Okay, but real quick, I'm gonna have a look at the cat, cause I know if you don't get to see Pumpkin, then people go, I miss Pumpkin, where's Pumpkin? Pumpkin, say hi. Okay, you're fine. <laughs> you, go, you do your thing, you rest. I'll leave you alone. Wasn't trying to run you off, she's really hyper right now. Well, actually, let's start with the front porch for a change. Since we're already over here, Toby thinks he's coming. No, I'm not right now, Toby. I'm sorry, bud. All that's out here to report on are the windmill palms. I planted these up, well, I don't know. Sometime in May, I put New Guinea impatiens in them and canary wing begonias in the back. I had them out in the backyard for quite a while. I really pushed the sun on these just because I had talked about how sometimes myself and dragon wing begonias like, don't always go so well together. Not dragon wing begonias, the New Guinea impatiens. Dragon wing begonias, no problem. New Guinea impatiens. Sometimes uh, they struggle. <laughs> we don't always mesh well. Generally, that's because I think I tend to give them too much shade. They can take a good amount of sun, so I let them get a lot of sun. I wanted to see how much they could take, and they really, they got a lot before I decided to go ahead and move them back here. They're colored up very nicely. Have the nice peachy one here in the front, and then another that's a really pretty vibrant pink in the back. Begonias. Looking nice. They're supposed to be this yellow wing color. That's why they're called the canary wing begonias. It's a type of dragon wing begonia, but it's different because yellow. And then Dark Knight, Lobularia in the front. They're all out of bloom right now. They started to struggle when we had that heat snap. So I went ahead and gave them a big cut back and they're already starting to flush back out. Look pretty good. And chatty birds up in the dogwood right now. The windmill palms themselves, they're looking pretty good. They're sturdy palms. They grow fairly slow, so there's not usually a ton to say about them. It's just, you know, here they are. They're doing okay. Have a damaged spear. This is probably from when we had that cold snap back in April, because this is the spear, the last one that emerged, and we had that random, random cold that got to a lot of the plants, had some snow, and that's, well, that's likely about where this plant was, where that leaf was down there inside the crown when it happened, when we got that random snow. But it's bouncing back looking good. Has a massive spear ready to open up out of the middle. I'm excited to see how big that one's going to be. Actually, I think this is the last one. So this one opened a few weeks ago and I think this one just popped open. They're really, they're starting to take off now that the heat's gotten here. They're doing a lot of growing and they seem to appreciate being on the front porch where they're getting drip. 
that makes a big difference. I was watering them, but the drip, it just, it does wonders. It's a total game changer with the plants. It's laughing because I'm seeing this guy mope. I'm sorry, Toby. I'm sorry I didn't let you come outside. That's the black box back there I was talking about. Pardon the glass. These guys are splashy. So there's always spots on the glass, but there's a thing back there. carries the water down back here to a filter that's under the tank. And right now I have it full of pothos. Helps keep the water clean. That's neither here nor there. Just one visual aid. There you go. All right, come on. Come on, you wanna go outside? Yes, no, you look excited about something. Come on, Toby. It's because he thinks it's time for D-I-N-N-E-R. It's not time yet, Toby. It's not time. If you eat right now, you're gonna wake me up at like four o'clock in the morning. I don't think so. Let's go outside, come on. Well, that's the fun plants to look at. It's beautiful outside right now too. The humidity is starting to calm down. It was, I enjoy the humidity, but it got to a point where I was not enjoying it so much, particularly just for filming. My lens was taking 20 minutes or so to defog. And then at one point it was so wet out here or so humid that just everything was wet. So I didn't even want to have the camera outside. I think the humidity is around 80% right now, so it's not dry, but it feels better than the nearly 100% has been for the few, past few days. Part of the informality is how I do my garden tours. I don't go above and beyond. I keep it real. I'm in little projects. There's always some stuff going on out here. I'm trying to think of like any areas that I haven't been in the garden tours. I know these planters over here haven't. Let me just start in this corner. I've been pulling pots out because I have a bunch of repots that I'm working on with a, some of the house plants. So I'm going to need those containers. This planter got done up back in May with these, what are they? Sun and Patience Tropical Rose, Dragon's Wing Begonia, nice, beautiful Persian shield. In the back, there's a Honeybell's Cutfia over here that's gonna be hard to get on camera. Has a more of a pink flower on it, and I really like that Cupfia a lot. I think it's really pretty. And there are some Caladiums in here, but they are just now starting to get going. So they're still hanging down in there. These are the Frog and a Blunder Caladiums. So my favorites. I have them planted all over the place. And I should probably talk about the palm itself, right? This is the Robolini palm, Phoenix Robolini, Pygmy Date palm. Looking pretty good. Has a little bit of sun damage, but that's fairly normal. My larger palm trees, they all get, I need to explain this, this every single tour, I get people asking me how I'm growing these plants where I live. I'm in zone 6A, 6B, I live right on the line. So all of the big tropicals, the big palm, and there's some more large palms down here, those all get stored away at a facility. I'm lucky to have a place around here where they just pick your big plants up, they take them to a warehouse for the winter time, and they bring them back in the spring. So the Robolini is one of the plants that I store. I could probably get this one in the house, but the pot that I have it in has gotten kind of difficult to get through the door. So uh, these are the only plants that I'm not able to harden off. They go straight from the warehouse to the backyard, and I just, I don't, there's not usually a shady spot large enough for some of these larger palms. So they usually end up with just a little bit of damage. Some sun scorch on the fronds. Well, that's a lot. I, went, I just happened to pull down the worst one here. Look at this one. This one's not as bad. This one's much better, see? Much better. Anyways, pygmy date palm. I love it. I think it's cute. Doing well, flushing out with lots of new growth. I think I even maybe see a spath getting ready to come out of there. So it'll hopefully have some fun little flowers and seeds falling out of it sometime soon. Bird of paradise. Looking great. Look at those colocasias. Those are colocasia Maui Gold. And there's even a little Cordelin Fraticasa in there. These were planted up in some of my big blue pots last year. And I went in and I just left the colocasia in it. I overwintered them inside in the garage in my grow space. I wasn't certain how they would do. I didn't know for sure if they would come back or not because I wasn't able to really see how big of a tuber they had established for themselves. But they did. They came back and I have a whole bunch of them in there right now. Which is Great, I because I bought a lot more because I didn't know if they were going to come back. So I, I have an awful lot of those colocasias now. Lantana tree. It's doing what lantana trees do. It's getting a little bit wild and unruly. I think I actually, this may not work. I may have to pull this because it wants to grow over in front of this door and I don't, I don't have to walk through it to get in and out of the house. So I might have to find a new spot for that, which isn't that big of a deal. Not that big of a deal at all because I have lots of lantana over here. This whole bed is coming together nicely. The, you see all these things right here? Those are all pumpkins. Those are not supposed to be there. Okay, that's better. Looks like there might still be a couple little ones in there, but I'll get them later. There's uh, another big one down here that I've decided to let go. 
and do its thing, but the rest didn't need to be in there. So I have all antenna in the front with some Tradescantia Sun Impatiens in the back. I have a Salvia down here that's absolutely beautiful. You just have to take my word for it because it's going out of bloom right now. I need to give it a little cut back and that'll encourage some fresh flowers to come out of it. And then a uh, Keith Red Gumfrina, that's what this is. Not doing much yet. It's only been in the ground for a few weeks, but I love the color on it. The, as they dry, they still hold on to their color and I really like that. It's nice that they don't immediately lose their color. There's also a tiny little sable palm over there, a little sable miner, a little scrub palm that's from last year. Overwintered in the ground just fine. I know this looks like a weed, but this is actually a Rolia. This is the Macho Morado variety from Proven Winners. Been a good grower. It started to do some flowering and then it stopped. It's getting plenty of light, so hopefully it'll go back into flower sometime soon. They like the warmer evenings and we've been having pretty warm evenings, so that should get it to do its thing again. I have a ginger right here that I'm getting ready to pot up. There are gonna be some random plants just sitting around the garden. I have been laying things out, getting ready to go into the ground. The ginger, look at it. This is Hedichium, which is a butterfly ginger flaming torch. Had this one in the ground for a long time. And after that winter, we had this and then the others that I'll show here in a moment. I didn't know if they were gonna come back, but they did. I'm so relieved that they came back because that was a brutal, brutal winter. Well, winter wasn't that bad. Y'all know if you're in the US back in February, we all had it pretty bad. I wasn't sure how that ginger and how the bananas and a bunch of other things were gonna do, but so far, so good. Well, I mean, obviously, look at it. That's just about caught up to right where it should be even after having a pretty cool and chilly April and May. The Croton, looking good. There's these, these vines. I'm constantly battling these wild morning glory vines, or actually, I think this is milkweed vine. Every year, it's a thing. Have to go through and pull them out. It's so bizarre to me how they go unnoticed like i don't notice them and the next thing i know somehow there's a 10 foot vine just shooting up through the plants would help if i got them out by the root wouldn't it anyways croton's looking good flushing out with lots of new growth there's a little bit of sun damage on it but not too much that's just part of what happens when you bring them outside i did put them in the shade at first but still you know it's a croton they don't really like to be moved they tend to throw a fit and i don't fret about it because they bounce back so quickly they flush back out with new growth so fast that I just, I just move them out. I don't give them too much time to acclimate. I used to really be tedious about it and make sure they had several weeks before I put them to the sun and then sometimes they would still scorch. So I said, forget about it. And the grow lights I had these under last winter were really intense. Obviously not as intense as the sun, right? But the foliage that they were putting out was the kind you get from lots of sun, that really dark foliage. So I figured they would probably be okay and they were. There wasn't much sun scorch on anything that was up top closer to the bulbs. It was when they got a little bit lower. But really, it's not that bad. It's only like, what, four leaves? If even, not a big deal. And this did, oh, I just missed it. It was just in flower, but looks like I missed it. The flowers aren't really very significant on the crotons. They're just little sticks with teeny, tiny little bitty white flowers on them. But it's looking good there. I love that croton. It's done a lot of growing. That thing is getting big. An old plant. Uh, what's over here? This is Sable Miner. The Sable Miner, these were planted, I think in April. They've all put out some new foliage and they're looking good. The uh, Colocasia Black Corals right here in the front. They're also doing well. They started to kind of shock back when we had that day where it got to about 105 out here, but they're already putting up new foliage and looking good. I kind of figured that would be the case. You know, sometimes you plant a Colocasia and they'll throw a fit. Same thing with alocasias. They were okay for about a week, but then we had that heat and they just wasn't for them. They didn't seem to appreciate it. I did plant a whole bunch of Stuttgart cannas in the back. You can just barely see them coming up. Is it Stuttgart or Stuttgart? I've never actually heard another person say it. I've been growing them for years, but never paid attention to the pronunciation. So those are a canna that's supposed to be variegated. They should have nice, pretty, green and white leaves on them. The ones I planted last year had no variegation. So hopefully that's not going to be the case with these, but I think they need to do some more growing before we'll be able to see. And the sun can be a factor with that too. Late morning into afternoon, they get a good amount of light over there. I wish I could remember the name of this lantana. It's absolutely beautiful. With most of my planters, I try and hold on to the tags for when I make videos. And this time I just, I forgot. It was in the 
video where I did it. I made sure to put it up there, whatever it was. This one starts off with a more lightish yellow to orange flower, like you can see on these over here. And then they slowly fade into a really pretty orange color. And then they finally end up being more of this deep pinkish red hue that you see on those right there. If I can find the name, I'll put it up here on the screen or I'll put it down in the description of the video. It's a really pretty one. I'm enjoying how well it's growing. And I just noticed a weed. Got a weed sticking up right here, right inside everything. It's probably going to be a theme. I haven't weeded in like a week because I, I haven't felt like it. Been busy, haven't been home, so might be pulling some weeds in this video. I did have someone ask me maybe a week or two ago how I manage my weeds and I just, I just pull them and sometimes I'll use Burnout and then there's another product. I think it's called Natria. It's in a big green bottle that I'll also use and it's supposed to be one of those ones that's more natural and safe to use. Just have to be careful where you put it and it has to be put on plants intentional, usually over and over again. These are the pumpkins that I decided to just let grow and do their thing. I don't know if it was a smart idea, but I just figured why not? It's always fun growing some squash. The pumpkins that, what happened is the fall pumpkins, myself and my sister, we just, she was in town and they're starting to rot. And I was like, yeah, we'll just throw them outside and grow some pumpkins. Here we are. They're a tiny little pumpkin, so, so they could be Jack B. Littles or some sort of other ornamental kind. I guess we'll find out together. I know this is not appropriate squash growing behavior, but I've always wanted to grow pumpkins. It's been a long time. I have grown them before, but since I have the dogs, all the spaces that I have in the yard where I can grow pumpkins get trampled by the doggies, right, Toby? Yeah, you like to run right through them. So I figured we'll just leave them here, see what happens. If they start to become out of control, which they kind of already are, then I can just cut them back. Luckily, whatever variety this is, it is flowering. It looks like it's going to set pretty tight inside there and maybe not so much along the vine. So I could just go through it and potentially keep them trimmed. Uh, we'll see, I'm gonna give it a week or two because these have been flowering for a while and it looks like there might be some teeny tiny itty bitty little baby fruits starting to come in in there. And if there are, then get to watch them grow. If not, then maybe I'll take them out. I don't know, it's just for funsies. Bananas over here are looking good. Got some sun damage or heat damage really from that really, really warm day that we had. And there's gonna be some storm damage too if we had the, the thing, the little microburst or tornado, whatever it was that came through here last week and just blew all the plants away, blew them over and all that fun stuff. They're looking great though. These are due for their July prune. Normally end of July, early June, I come into all my bananas, these, and then these over here and I try and cut out the lower foliage, just open things up so the air can move through there more easily. I think it looks nicer. But I wanted to do the tour before I did that. I'll probably hope we be getting to that. Well, maybe tomorrow? We will see. It takes up a lot of space when it comes to the yard waste and the street's still full of twigs and sticks and all sorts of things waiting to be picked up by the company who's gonna come through and clean all that stuff up. So it might have to wait a minute, which isn't a big deal, but that'll look nice when get these laurel ones out and can see more of those trunks, the pseudo stems that are in there and be able to look through them. It's going to be pretty. I have a crinum back here behind this yard waste barrel that's sitting here. Luckily it's not in flower, so we're not missing anything just yet. I had to move this because I had to get to the plumbing over here because we had a leaky pipe, but normally that sits over here by the hose reel with all the hose stuff. I'd started to keep the hose stuff in the garage or the hose stuff, the pool cleaning supplies in the garage. I think that just looks a lot nicer, but that's just been daily storms. So it's been daily cleaning. So it's like, forget it. I'm gonna leave it there for right now since I'm cleaning so often. Over here, there's a lot going on. I started to get plants laid out to put in this planter and then I decided to stop, do this garden tour first. The sable miners that were planted last summer, the little scrub pumps are looking pretty good. Not seeing anything that's indicating that they're going to flower this year, but maybe I like to see them flower. One, it looks really cool. They shoot up a great big stick that comes up really high, gets all the little berries on it. And two, it's just, it's a good indicator of health, but this is only their second year in the ground. They just got planted last year. So I would be a little bit surprised if they even were going to do that, especially after that cold snap we had. I'm just happy that they're here and that they didn't die. Same thing with these gingers. These are just, cuttings or um, divisions from the one I showed before. One here, one over there in the back, and another one over here. And they all came back, even after that cold snap. They got a little bit of mulch. This spot's pretty warm. And you see all this vine? Look at that, I just pulled a few days ago. That stuff grows 
like insanity. I have to stay on top of that non-stop or it just takes over. I mean, it already is. Look at it, it's everywhere. Speaking of vines, passion flower starting to do its thing on the side of the house. That's going to be beautiful. You can just barely see it from inside that kitchen window, but I cannot wait for that to get a little bit bigger and start to have flowers on it and see the pollinators on it. I love passion flowers, all of them, all the different types. This is just one of the Cerulea's, just the common blue passion vine. I overwintered that inside. They can, sometimes you can overwinter them here. The Maypop is more hardy than the Cerulea in zone six, but uh, this Cerulea is all I've been able to find for a pretty long time. So it just goes in the garage and I don't do much with it. Doesn't even get much light, just gets splashed with water like once a month. Temperature's fairly cool, so it just hangs out. And I have it back over here and we'll get to see it come up and flower. It's gonna be so pretty. I have banana cannas down here. Those got planted a few weeks ago and they're starting to do their thing. Slowly but surely, those are going to get nice and big. They should, I would think this year, get at least six feet tall, but they'll get even bigger than that someday, assuming that they survive. You know, I planted a whole bunch last year and that cold snap we had, they didn't stand a chance. When I got more, I made sure to put some of them over in this spot because this spot is a very warm little microclimate during the winter time. And that foliage is gonna look so beautiful when I'm looking through that window and I'll have the view of the Alexander Palm over here with, with the Persian Shield that's coming up in between those trunks and then some begonias that, that well, they're not sun scorched. The Heliconia that I transplanted in here, somewhat sun scorched, not shocked by that at all because I didn't have to make the sun. I went from the garage, brought it here, stuck it in there and figured that most of that old growth wasn't gonna do anything and it would start to put up new growth, which it has. Fun new growth coming up out of the bottom. There's also a teeny tiny little baby you can barely see it. That's a Colocasia pharaoh's mask right there. It died back completely after I planted it and it's just now starting to come back up. So that should look pretty neat here in a few weeks. I'm hoping. Plumeria, just being a plumeria, nothing to report there. It lost the majority of its foliage last winter. So I doubt there'll be any flowers out of it this year, but we will see a pretty oleander back here. Maui sunrise or sunset, one of those doesn't like to focus. That should put on a really big show here in probably about a week. The tips of those leaves are getting lots and lots and lots of buds in them. I have some more oleanders that I need to get planted up over here. They're not hardy here, but I ordered some of the Austin Pretty Limits oleanders from Proven Winners and they are tiny. They are so small. The ones that they sent that I think that it would be best to plop them in the ground. It's works them into the garden and sometime around mid-September, I'm gonna pull them up, put them in pots and take them into the garage for winter storage because they'll just, they'll grow so much faster if I can get them in the ground. It's not ideal to have to do it that way, but the, I mean, they're, they're so small. So I think that's gonna be the best bet to get in size on them. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I have another ginger coming up back there that someone sent to me and it is looking beautiful. That's gonna have nice big yellowy flowers on it. And then I have amongst the vines here that I need to pull out two more Hedichiums that are pink varieties. So the Flaming Torch is orange flaming torch right here and over here and over there. Pretty orange flowers and then going to have pink coming up from those and then a fun yellowy orange coming up from that one right there. Calocasia bikini teenies. Aren't they fun? They're great. They're doing really well. I am really glad that I moved a patch of these, a few patches of them to inside the bananas last year because none of the ones that were outside of the mulch that was over the baju bananas here None of those came back. Well, that's not true. A few of them came back up that were up back there against the back of the house, but they're back against the house. So I keep forgetting about them. These have been reliably hardy here for several years. I've been growing these. They come back strong, but man, do they take over. The undersides of their leaves, really, really pretty. When they're getting more light than this, they tend to stand up more straight. Not a ton, not quite like a coffee cup or a teacup, but pretty close and the water collects in them. There's some water back there in them. When it rains, they spill forward. It looks so nice. It's always fun to watch that when we're having showers to see them fill up and tip down. Something kind of tranquil and fun about it. Dune grass, stuff takes over. Do not plant blue dune grass in any spot where you don't want it because it, it's gonna go everywhere. For this scenario, I'm fine with because I wanted it here. So that's filling out. Look at these seed heads. Aren't they fun? Fun, wispy, airy seed heads. They're always a delight to try and get the camera to focus on. But again, those come up right about this time of year. So they're still on track doing the things they're supposed to do. I like seeing these when the breeze blows through. 
it's much more visible in person. There are several of them back there you can see right through, but they just sway with the wind. There's something fun and tranquil about them. And, and that blue color, I think, just looks great. It makes things stand out more. It makes the green from the banana stand out more. It makes the reddish tints that are back here. Which you can't even see because I need to trim these bananas. That'll be more visible once I get that done, hopefully pretty soon. It's a nice texture. It's always fun having grasses mixed into the garden, planted up with everything. Uh, queen palm here. That is supposed to be over here. This pot got blown over in the storm, uh, what, a week ago? Got it glued back together, but I'm not quite confident yet that I can get that palm back in here. So I'm just gonna let it hang out for a while. It can chill over here next to everything else. It's on drip. This was sitting right here, right next to that pot, and the wind kept blowing it into the water. And I got so lucky that it never fell all the way in there. So finally, I went ahead and just scooted it over there. That way, if the wind takes it down again, I'm not gonna have to get in the pool to try and get it back out. Gonna palm trees, Washingtonia, looking good. Got a few new growths on it since that was put in the ground here, what, back in May? Doing nice. I wasn't sure how it was gonna do in this spot, but this was the only spot it could go, so. I'm glad it's doing well. I have some sun-loving bromeliads over here and a whole bunch of roses that are going to be planted right in this area. The bromeliads are just hanging out here for a minute. They're just having a little vacation in the spot. This isn't where they're going to go. This is going to get filled in right around this area with some oh-so-easy Italian ice roses. That's going to be pretty when those start to come out. I planted a whole bunch of dahlias from right around here to just up in that corner that was in a video a week or so ago and i was a little concerned because there's been a chipmunk going through here digging holes absolutely everywhere a, gro a ground squirrel sorry not a chipmunk but it, this was just full of holes the day after everything planted so i wasn't sure if that had gotten into those tubers or not but as of just this morning i'm starting to see some growth it's not much just a little bit just a tiny bit of green coming up over here some over okay the dog's bumping up against the tripod cafe a late a late a let that that one it's a pretty dahlia that one and looks like there's maybe three others so i'm relieved to finally be seeing some growth out of those and then there are also banana cannas planted up against that fence so those are going to get nice and tall with that big bold reddish kind of brown foliage on them and then in front of them there'll be all those dahlias and once those dahlias get to be i don't know a foot or so tall i'm going to throw some tomato cages above them to help keep them in place. I know some of you have mentioned you do the same thing. It works very well. You can't even see the tomato cages once the dahlias come through and start to fill things in. All of these impatience got planted up. Not last week, but all that happened in last week's video was just storm cleanup. That was it. I didn't get much planted at all. I'm still working on storm cleanup actually. Lots of mud and sticks and things that just keep flooding onto the patio every time it rains and just slowly scooting things back and cleaning things up. But they have all started to stand back up. Remember, they looked a little sad when I got them planted. That happens sometimes with some patients. But it's actually already starting to fill in pretty well. This, it looks patchy right now, but it, in a couple weeks, it's going to look a lot more full and a lot more colorful. Wasn't even sure how they were going to do because we had that heat spell that came through after I planted them, but it was, I think, better to get them in the ground than to wait and see how they would have done sitting in those six packs. This, this was necessary for them. Just seeing that I forgot a bag of garden soil. I'll go ahead and get that put into the recycling. I don't think there's any action from the caladiums that are back here yet. I haven't noticed anything. Anyways, probably need to give that a few more days. There's a row of caladiums buying this entire thing here. And I know this is an eyesore. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. I'm gonna give it away to someone in the area who needs a trough. But until then, it's, it can just hang out right there. This begonia got put in the ground at the same time as those impatience, and it's already putting on a decent amount of growth. This is the, it's not the smooch, what is it? Pink teardrops is the variety on that one. There's its tag. I talked about when I planted this one about how much I love the leaf shape on these. That fun, I mean, it's a typical, kind of what you would expect from a lot of begonias, but it's a perennial variety. So it's going to come back every year and get bigger and bigger. It should have a mounted shape that'll take up the spot right here. It'll lean forward a little bit and have fun little pink flowers that dangle off the top. Can't wait to get to see that happen. I'm probably not gonna do a ton this year. It should grow some, but I don't think there's gonna be a huge flower show. It'll probably have a few, but not too many. I think we need to give that a couple years. Like I said, it's a perennial. They take a little bit longer to get into their groove. Oh, don't wanna forget the house plants. One of my variegated alocasias. Doing really well in this spot, actually. I gave them a good amount of shade last year. Except for this one. This one right here got a good amount of sun. 
You see it even has a tiny little trunk on it. Started to look like it was going to revert this past winter and I gave it a complete cut back, cut everything off of it, and it flushed back out with new variegated foliage. But I'm glad that that happened. So some of the leaves are a little bit deformed, which is odd. That's not usually like a leaf like this is usually something I see when hormones are introduced or something's being improperly fertilized or some sort of nutrient is out of whack. I've never noticed the leaves coming out this weird and wonky on this one, but it did put out two others that were like this and I cut them off. And this one is a newer one. Hopefully it cuts that out. Hopefully that's just a fluke because of the erratic weather that we've had over the last several weeks where it's like 100 degrees one day and 50 the next. I think maybe now that things are warm and stably warm, it should maybe knock that nonsense out. Let's hope. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's still a pretty leaf. I've had this plant for many, many, many years, so I'm not too worried about it. You know, sometimes you have to wonder if something's been introduced to it, but that wouldn't be the case here. Cause like I said, I've had this for such a long time, I don't know, at least, at least six or seven years. Anything that would have been introduced to it should have worn off by now. It's a better look at the pool planters. This is what both of them looked like. Supertunia Vista bubblegum right here mixed in with pink dragon's wing begonias. Might want to come over here so you can actually see what those flowers look like. Things are starting to come over the edge and spill and look beautiful. I know that it may not look super attractive to have that gray pot there, but I think it's fine. I've always done it that way. Once the petunias flush over the side, it won't even be visible. And that way I can just lift these out in the winter time and not have to risk breaking the pots. Especially now that a storm already broke one of them, don't need to break any more of them, right? The more you don't have to move the big ceramic pots around, the better, at least for me. That's always the way I try and do it. The less movement, the better. Oh, the mimosa. I should have filmed the mimosa before it fell asleep. Well, <laughs> finally getting a spectacular display of flowers out of this tree. It's taken a long time. I've had this tree for years and it would just give me a few flowers every year. But this year it's fully flushed out. Just, it would look better if the leaves weren't all curled up. You didn't know. Mimosa trees, they fold their leaves up at nighttime. And during storms and high levels of distress. They close those things up and make some more aerodynamic. It's a smart mechanism to keep them safe. You can see there's some more buds opening that are going to open up there on that end. Love mimosa trees. They're some of my favorites. Doesn't look super attractive right now with its leaves all closed up. Boy, are they messy trees though. Messy, messy, messy trees. It's worth it, but it's a lot of cleanup you got to do with them. They're always dropping things and they flower and they drop things and then they're leaves are so tiny that they tend to make a pretty big mess also yeah like i said it's worth it not a big deal pedicis japonicus the big ones here the variegated ones are buried underneath those i'm gonna go through and actually pull all the big ones out here because they're shading the variegated ones too much so i'm gonna get on that probably tomorrow i think tomorrow we're supposed to have some rain pretty soon we had a ton of rain yesterday so the ground should still be wet, but with a fresh rain, these just, they pull right out of the ground so easily. And that, so it just makes sense to just wait. So I'll get that done here soon. The larger variety, I'm gonna let grow up that hill and naturalize the area. I think that'll look really neat and nice. And then the variegated ones can stay in the front. I'm going to pull a whole bunch and move them down in that area where the impatience are as well. I talked about doing that this year. And I just, I miss the window. They need to be moved when temperatures are still gonna be mild for several weeks. And then we had that snow in late April. And then I assumed that May was gonna be warm because it kind of was. So I was like, well, I probably shouldn't do this because it's gonna be hot. And then it, it wasn't, but it normally is. So I still stand by that decision. I think I would have had a lot of them die if I had tried to transplant them that time of year. So I'm going to wait a moment. All right, sprinklers are on. Need to give some space here. Uh-oh. Got an all white leaf coming out on that one. Oh, excuse you. Why is the sprinkler spraying over here? That would explain why I keep having to clean algae up off the ground. Apparently I have a sprinkler head that needs to be adjusted. We're gonna get on top of that. It's been a fun year with the sprinklers, making a lot of adjustments and a lot of changes. Over here, it's mostly just shade plants and plants that I'm working down the line to getting repotted. I'm gonna repot all these pothos. We've already gotten a few of them repotted this morning, but the rest of them, they're still sitting here because I want them in the shade because they're in tiny pots. They need to be upgraded so that way they don't dehydrate so quickly. Got some begonias and tradescantias and just little things that I'm working on doing something with. I think I'm going to be putting a lot of those into combo pots. I'm kind of over having lots of little plants laying around. It's just, it's too much. It looks messy. Hydrangea tree looking beautiful. 
buds haven't opened yet, but it's looking nice. The storm blew this, so it's all wonky at an, at an angle now. I'm not thrilled about that, but it just is what it is. I did put a stake on it, and I'm very slowly straightening it out. I don't want to go too far or do too much at one time, because that could, you know, it could mess with their roots and then might mess with the flowers. It's a delicate time for them. I want to make sure those flowers can do their thing and open up and look stunning. Hopefully in just a week or two. Man, between the sprinklers and the dolphins, got all kinds of noise going on out here. That's all right, we're outside. Outside can be noisy sometimes. Working my way through here, getting things potted up. I have an area cleared out up here to do some seating, which I'm looking forward to. Hopefully I'll be getting that done sometime in the next day or so. Actually, I already have the seeds laid out, most of them picked out, and I'm gonna be doing a whole, well, you'll see if you watch that video, I'm gonna be getting a whole bunch of stuff going from the front all the way to the back with some height maybe something to have some privacy that would be nice japanese maple bonsai looking beautiful love that plant it's a fantastic maple it's so pretty the leaves on this particular one i can't remember the variety name i'll try and find it but they get a nice color to the outside of the foliage whether they're in sun or shade which is hard sometimes to find with japanese maple sometimes they got to get into the sun to get that color but I've noticed with this one, I shouldn't say full shade. Well, I didn't say full shade, but I said shade. As long as it gets morning sun, it at least still has that nice hue to the leaves up above, that pretty reddish outline that's on those fun lace leaves. Very fun lace leaves. I love a lace leaf. Japanese maple. Cow, I literally forgot what I was saying in the middle of the sentence. That's the way things go sometimes. This variegated hibiscus is looking just lovely. I am obsessed with the foliage on this plant. It comes out with that fun reddish color to it. Then as they age, they turn to just a green leaf with some fun patches on them. It's grown like a champ. That's a really sturdy plant. Enjoy the view, Toby. Here's my repotting station where I have my pots and a bucket full of soil, soil blends. And this is what I'm working on right now. Some hibiscus, Dracenia draco, which is doing wonderfully. This plant looks so great. I love the trunk on it. Such a fun plant, neat texture. It's fun to look at and wow, is it easy to grow. Not fussy at all. As long as you don't let it get too wet and then you might have some problems. The planters are looking pretty good. This year I did the Supertunia Vista Fuchsia in these instead of the Vista Paradise. That's them right there in the middle. And I have to say, eh, I don't know. They're still not that pink. The Vista Paradise, I did those last year and decided they weren't really for me because they just were more red than I wanted for these planters. I prefer some things that had more pink to it, so I thought I'd trade the fuchsia. And it, it looks almost identical, at least in my head looks almost identical to the paradise so i might possibly potentially swap these out with the supertunia vista bubblegums just because it's still early enough that i may as well if i'm already not crazy about it they're pretty don't get me wrong but it's just not quite the color combination that i wanted to have over here i would like a different shade of pink than what goes in with the silverberry and then the purple on the bordeaux over here it's pretty like i said it's very very pretty but I just think that the key point is to say the Supertunia Bubblelicious, the Vista Bubblegum, that I think that that would just be a better pairing there. I don't know, maybe I'll swap them out on one and leave it as it is on the other. And then we can see together which ones look better. Maybe do it like that. That could be nice. There's more of the Maui Gold Colocasias here. Like I said, I got a lot of them. They're planted everywhere. Cordelin Frotocusa Kiwi. And it's stunning. Absolutely love the foliage on that particular portal in front of This one and the Harlequin are probably some of my favorites. I do still have the Singapore Twist. It's in timeout. It had mealybugs, so it's hanging out in the driveway with the other mealybug plants out far away from things so I can spray them more appropriately. Heliconias are looking good in here. This is the Chaconiana Heliconia. There's one on each side. And in the center, I have the hirsuta. The other hirsuta might be opening up. Might be easier to see a flower on those. Let's see here. Okay, kind of. Here's the hirsuta. These normally, the flowers will keep going up. They'll have several bracts that come in and out like that, and they have more red and green and orange. And they're just more colorful than the chaconianas, which are beautiful. I love the orange on those, but the hirsutas, I don't know, one of my favorites. That's also largely because they are so incredibly easy to grow. As far as hello, I mean, most heliconias are pretty easy to grow, but they overwinter really well for me is what I'm saying. 
See, over here, looking through the camera, it, the color combo doesn't bother me as much. In person, it's just, it's a lot more red. Maybe I'll see when it's on the computer if it looks just as red. But as I'm seeing it through the lens, I think that that looks quite lovely. Huh. Well, I don't know, maybe I just talked myself out of it. Maybe they'll stay. We will have to wait and see. This Orange Bird of Paradise, this is one that got smashed from the storm last week. I was concerned about it, but it is bouncing back. It's starting to pull its leaves back up, so it's not quite as damaged as I thought it was, but there's still some significant damage and I'm gonna have to do a lot of pruning on it. It's all right, they're tough plants, like the Bismarck Palm, Bismarckia nobilis, more of that fun steely blue foliage. So pretty, makes me so happy. This queen palm, wow is it a fast grower. It is, it is getting very big, very fast. It's in a 30 inch container and it's, it's really, it's been doing its thing. It's loving life outside right now. I actually need to do some pruning on it. You can see there's a frond over there and I think this one right here could probably come off too. That's yeah, still pretty green, maybe I'll leave it. Bamboo, doing well. It's just doing what bamboo does, growing, being all airy and pretty. Those are in containers. There's bamboo on each side here. So they're containerized. They won't be able to take over. Hardy to zone five, so they should be okay with our winters. But they're in a container, so worst case scenario, I may have to move them to a more sheltered spot during the winter, but I don't know. The yellow grove bamboo is what that is, and it's pretty tough. Lots of begonia action going on down here. Pink dragon's wings. All flushed out and looking pretty. The hummingbirds have been coming over and enjoying those dangly flowers. And that is a Riger begonia, I believe. Suppose I could pull the tag out just to make sure. Yeah, Riger begonia. It looks wilty and dry, but it's actually, its growth is all nice and stiff. This is a tuberous type begonia. And I mentioned when I first showed it that um, to not get too attached because me and tuberous begonias are kind of like me and New Guinean patients. Don't always go well together but it's doing fairly well and i think that that's because i moved it where the drip's not hitting it i don't have to worry about it being overwatered. essentially i'm able to keep it from rotting out so that's good it seems to be appreciating that and it's still here six weeks later so that's good this planter y'all know if you saw last week's video this entire queen palm got blown over and pretty much everything that was planted in the top had to get replanted so it's a little wonky still i could probably straighten that out some i just don't want to mess with their roots too much so i've just I've just left it alone for now. Same thing with this Persian shield. It's kind of gone off in its own direction. I wish it was centered. This seems to be the direction it wants to go. I'll probably have to go in there and straighten that out some more. The Nanook, Tritoscantio, it's coming over the front. Loving life, looking pretty. Nice big foliage on it too. Not super colorful because the spot doesn't get a ton of sunlight. It's fairly shaded right here, hence why these Guzmani type uh, bromeliads are able to do okay. These don't like very much sun. So I was on the fence about even having that nanook there because I was like, I don't know, is there going to be enough sun? But I think it is. It's got a lot of growth coming out from the ends and from the middle. It's getting ready to flush back out with even more. My favorite caladiums <laughs> so far this year next to the frog in the blenders, they're okay. They didn't get too torn up from that bad storm, but I still don't know the name of it. The new growth comes out this fun, just like normal caladium-ish look to them. Kind of green with some red. And then they age out into whatever you would call this. This magical, beautiful leaf. They're so pretty. I know, I need to get a thesaurus. I say everything is so pretty. Don't know what else to call it. There's another one. Love it. Looks great. I guess Altissima. <laughs> it's, it's happy. I don't want to keep it right here, though. That just kind of ended up in this spot while I was moving some other things around, and I never moved it. I don't think that this necessarily looks great. I should go ahead and put that someplace more appropriate. But it is kind of fun seeing those big variegated shiny leaves when I'm sitting over at the table that's right behind me. Speaking of houseplants, the Gloriosum back there has a new growth coming out of it. You can barely see it from here. This is about as close as I can get. You can see that new growth coming out there. It already put up one other growth a few weeks ago. It is amazing how quickly these plants grow when you get them outside. You can tell they really appreciate it. And even this Anthyrum down here, it's a Crystallinum, that one uh, looked like it had been smashed when a bunch of debris was down on it after the storm. But lo and behold, you see all that reddish stuff in there? That's all new growth. It has like one, two, three, four, about five or six leaves just shooting right out of it. So it seems to be happy. I'm going to have to watch the light over here because the season's just changed over. You know, it's only been summer for a few days with Earth did its tilty thing, so I don't know for sure if it's going to get quite enough sun there. I might have to move it down the line. I know it seems like an odd place to keep those, 
but I have a mister that hits this area really well and philodendrons and anthuriums always love it. They always grow so well back there in that little corner where that mister runs. So I thought I'll just stick it back there for now. And they're growing so well that I figure I'll just leave them for a little while anyways until it gets too shady and then I'll find a different spot for them. It's not potted up. The Gloriosum isn't potted up in that ceramic planter. It's just the leaves were getting big enough on it that the wind kept knocking it over. So that's just sitting in there to help keep it stable. You don't want the plants blown over too much. It can really do some damage to them. On the Thai, it's doing really, really well. When I planted this, oh, not planted, when I moved the pot over here several weeks ago, I had mentioned that I wasn't sure how it would do over here because I've always kept it on the other side of the yard until the sun settles down in this spot. But just after thinking about it, it's like, I know so many people down in Florida and a few in the islands who grow these out in their gardens and I see pictures of them, they get lots of sun. But not the variegated ones, that's something to keep in mind, right? Because variegated plants are gonna scorch more easily. But I figured, okay, I can put it back here in this corner, keep an eye on it. And if it looks like the sun's gonna be too much, then I'll just move it. And uh, it seems to be loving the sun. It gets a good amount of direct morning light, maybe I'd say, a Oh, I don't know, an hour. I was gonna say a couple hours, probably an hour and that's filtered through the rest of the day up until probably two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And then it's pretty shaded, but it's happy. It has a huge leaf that I don't, I'm not even gonna be able to get back there to show you. Currently surrounded by fuchsias that I moved down here into the dark shade. Lots of plants just laying down here in the shade. We had that heat spell. It goes down so I can get back there, but it does have a huge leaf that opened up right where it's really hard to see. And that just unfurled yesterday. So that's, only going to get bigger. You know, it takes them several days usually to fully open up and get more of a stiff texture to them. It doesn't look like it has tons of variation on it, but it's a little bit too soon to tell. I had to give that some more time. But I just really like the way that ended up looking with the fountain in front of it and these akubas surrounding it. Not the Medanilla, sometimes called a Malaysian orchid. Doesn't that have some of the coolest flowers on it? They're these long sprays, the flowers, they almost look like berries, and they're just this really sweet shade of pink. Hope that fan wasn't bothering anybody. I didn't realize how close my mic was to it. And get closer to that flower so you can have a better look at it. They're so neat, so cool. And this is big too, really big spray of flowers. There's another one right behind it over there that's starting to open up, which is great. That had started to put out that bud before I moved this over here. When I moved this over here, it was just like with the Thai, the Monstera. I mentioned that I wasn't positive how much it was going to like this spot because I usually keep these in more of a shaded location, but it's only been a few weeks and look, you see this? Got a new flower bud there, have another one down here, flower bud there, flower bud there, There's another one back there. I think almost every single one of its old growths on this plant has a bud on it. So that is going to be putting on a spectacular show hopefully throughout the rest of the summer, at least I'd say for probably the next two months because the flowers on these, those big pink sprays, they last a pretty long time. I'm glad I fought some of my instincts with some of these plants. I'm being surprised with giving them more light than I used to give them. I always used to go more towards shade because it's just safer that way. But if you want flowers and you want growth, plants need light. Even shade loving plants need light. So I figured, Hey, let's give it a try. It's working out well so far. Working out especially well for one of my favorite orchids. Isn't this a stunner? The flowers on these have so much intricate detail in it. This one, I'm not gonna try and say the name. I'll just show you the tag here. It's a sesame. It's a really popular variety. A lot of people grow them. It's not one that you would normally see at the big box stores not one that's like hyper cloned all that often but sometimes you see them flowered for me back in i don't know maybe it was december or january so i was really happy and surprised to see it put out another spike not just another spike but a spike that's so healthy and full oh and this is it's not sitting in the water the pot that it's in it's on some dry pebbles so it's that's That'd be too much for it, probably. You never know when the water's running and has oxygen in it. Sometimes you can get away with some things, but with the moss that it's in, I think that that would be too much. So that is lifted up, so it's not in constant contact with the water, but it does get hit by my misters fairly frequently, more frequently than I figured would be safe. But again, here we are, looking like that went okay. That's so pretty. 
Such a fun, beautiful orchid. This is one of my favorite spots in the morning. This gentle fountain right here that has some of that aged color to it with the gorgeous orchid right above it. And of course the monstera that's mixed in with that and then the metanella back there. It's just so lush and colorful. Everything over here looks so happy and healthy. Not that things don't look happy and healthy in the other areas, but it's just like this spot I think is just absolutely beautiful. This Adenidia palm, I should start by actually showing the plant that things are planted under, shouldn't I? Adenidia is flushing out with lots of new growth. That's a Christmas palm. I put a bunch of caladiums in here and they're just now starting to show some growth, but it's not really enough to bother trying to show you guys, just some sticks. Pink's dragon's wing begonia right there. That's ugly, taking it out. And then I have a lantana here that I was hoping would be in flower for the tour, but it's not. It's the luscious royal cosmo from Proven Winners. I guess I could show the tag. That's why I hold on to these things. It's a lantana that's primarily pink and orange. Like a lot of lantanas are. I don't know, we'll see how it looks. I'm gonna pop a begonia in the front here because I just got lazy and I don't feel like repainting the pot, so. Putting a begonia over the front, one of the Vista bubblegums or the silverberry, any one of the Vistas, that's gonna, in like two weeks, won't be able to see the edge of the pot. I'll do that soon. I do have some of this beautiful variegated basket grass coming over the edge. The basket grass is one of my favorite annuals. It's not super easy to find, and I think that that's because in areas where it can be a perennial, it is horribly invasive. Where I live, this can't survive our winters, so that's not something we have to worry about. It has a similar appearance and texture to bridal veil, but there's more spacing between the leaves. When temperatures are cooler, there will be hints of pink, and with that variegation, and they, uh, they almost look kind of wiry, which I know doesn't make them sound all that attractive, but there's just something about them. Once they start to flow over the edge of a pot, it kind of naturalizes the area so it can break up some formality in my backyard i don't go for a ton of formality my front yard's much more structured that way but in the back i do like to be able to just plop the plants around and let them fill in and do their thing so they're really great for that and the texture i just think they have fantastic texture it's really airy and fun and just something about it looks nice and peaceful but again if you live someplace where this could grow as a perennial Definitely wouldn't recommend it, because like I said, it is extremely, extremely invasive, like destructively invasive. The Raging Cajun Rulia in here as well. I wasn't positive how I'd feel about this in here because the flowers are pretty red. Uh, you can't really see them right now, but they are. I think that that actually pairs up really, really nice with this pseudo anthrop, I'll show the tag. So I hold on to the tag, pseudoranthemum. There it is, black varnish. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've talked about this plant and I still can never remember Pseudoranthemum. Isn't it neat? So pretty and shiny. I love this plant. And it was a trooper when it was in its nursery can too. I only had it in the nursery can for maybe a week and a half before I planted it, but it was never fussy about water or anything. It's just, it's been great. It's always been great. Just a super fun plant. Doesn't get very big. I would like to find another one or maybe even lift this one in the fall and try this out as a house plant because it's just, it's so pretty. I love the foliage on there. And right behind it, more heliconias. I have lots of heliconias. This one's just getting ready to flower. I think it has another flower on it. Or it did, and it looked really pretty. Where did it go? Oh, it's behind the trunk. <laughs> it does not want to be seen. I think it looks nice with that ginger in the background and that Persian shield. Doesn't that look cool together? I think that's a fun pairing. The ginger, though, I might be moving. It's because the spot's getting somewhat full and I'd like to get the ginger to a spot that's more accessible to a different drip line so I can run drip specifically to it. So it's a ginger, it's an alpinia, they need a lot of water. And uh, as much as I like that pairing, I think that that looks really cool. You can barely see it. Pretty hidden back here behind this croton and then this dracaena <laughs> who's doing its own thing, living its own life. This spot gets a lot of light. I originally had this back in deep, deep, deep shade and that's why it's looking like it's moving towards the sun. It'll straighten back out. That's actually, it's getting more sun than it probably should right now, but I'm doing that on purpose because I would like for that growth to straighten itself out. I might just go ahead and turn it around and just give it a couple weeks and then that will start to look better. The mother and daughter Croton in front here, love it. It's starting to flush out with some new growth and looking pretty. I know, looking pretty. That's what I say about everything. Speaking of looking pretty, look at Mr. Freckles. Starting to bounce back. This had a big plant fall on it with the storm last week and it was just 
smash like a pancake. Move this up onto the wall so nothing can fall on it anymore. It's the one that's in charge of that fate now for everything below it. It's in a really fairly sturdy pot though. So that shouldn't be going anywhere. About this one all the time. My favorite croton, really fuss free as far as crotons are concerned, or as far as any houseplant is concerned. Fantastic. If you can find a freckles croton, I highly, highly suggest you get one. And then let me know what your experiences are, because maybe I've just got lucky with this one. I doubt it though. I've had it for several years and it's always been a trooper. And it's just pretty. I have some more heliconias down here. Looking nice. Looking like heliconias. There's a, what is it? Strawberry Vinca Cora coming over the front of that blue pot. And then I have some more orchid. That's what they're called, orchid, orchid, yeah. <laughs> they're called orchid coravinca in the top. I'm going to move because I just, they look too similar. So I'm going to move those somewhere else. I'll, my, I may go ahead and pop them up here around this areca palm with this fun basket. We already talked about the basket grass. There's more right there. That's where I put the rest of it. And then the areca palm. Okay, I know this doesn't look that great, but that's from the storm. Otherwise, it's actually doing very, very well. Remember, there were some concerns with some rot on the larger trunks and I was treating it with some fungicide and bouncing back, it's hard to see, but there's new growth coming out of every single one of these trunks except for this one back here. So that's fantastic. I'll go ahead and prune that off of there. I didn't really notice it. Sometimes when the camera's out, you just notice things that you just, I guess, because look at things in more of a broad scope. I do try and walk the garden every single day and appreciate what's in front of me, but sometimes, you know, you just, miss little things like that. Kind of like with weeding, you'll think you have all the weeds pulled and then all of a sudden just boom, three days later and there's like a three foot tall weed that you're like, where did that come from? I'm sure y'all can relate to that. The joys of gardening. Okay, someone's ready for their dinner. Good boy, Toby. Such a sweet, patient Toby. Hope everybody's doing well. That's pretty much everything. I could spend a little bit more time on some of the house planty type things, but I'm gonna be going through and repotting a bunch of those this weekend. So maybe I'll touch on those in that video just for time's sake. This is probably already pretty long. Comment down below what's going on in your gardens. The heat finally made its way in. Your plant's starting to grow. <laughs> That's a silly question. I've been seeing the forecast. The heat has made its way in for a lot of people. It's, I hope you're staying cool, safe. It's dangerously hot in a lot of places, but it, regardless, comment down below. Love talking to everybody. Say hi. I've got about maybe five planters left that I'd like to do, and then I'm done. Well, I'm never done. It's gardening. I'll be gardening all year. It's a gardening channel. There'll always be projects going on. But as far as like my, a few of the annuals that are over there, just about done with those. I'm looking forward to getting those planted up hopefully this weekend, just finishing up with a lot of cleaning. This area down here was a disaster. I know it's still kind of a hot mess, but you should have seen it before. It was bad. There's the mimosa again. You need to check back in the vlog. I'll be sure to get a better shot of that thing when the leaves are opened. I hope y'all are doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. I'm gonna have a biplane flying over. I only got 8% battery left. Anyways, as always, and of course, most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.